Hello, I'm back in The Sims 3 for today's video, but as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be sharing some opinions. So I just want to give a quick disclaimer before we get into it. Uh, three points to consider. Number one, this is not serious. I'm talking about interior design. It's not a matter of life and death. Uh, I'm not actually angry at any of these items or wishing for their demise. And uh, you do what you want with your house. Who cares? Uh, number two, this is not personal. You might like some of these items or even have them in your home. Just because I don't like them doesn't mean I don't like you. I probably don't know you. And number three, I have no authority. I have no expertise or training in design of any type, and my own apartment is a collection of cheap mismatched furniture from Goodwill and big box chain stores with all of the typical aesthetic sins of an apartment, popcorn ceilings, boob lights, aluminum blinds, etc. So just consider the source before you give my opinions any power to upset you. And with that, let's get into it. I'm going to be styling all these trends in Jamie Jolina's house in the Sunset Valley neighborhood. It's a little mid-century from the outside, but it's designed in that base game build style of let's take two super bright colors and use them on every single surface on this lot. So I'm going to be changing that. All of the trends I'll be using bother me for different reasons, but for the most part I either find them silly, impractical, or hostile. So I'm going to start off in the bedrooms of this house with the first defense category, silly. The items in this category are not hurting anyone, I just find them to be deeply unserious. I'll also note that these trends have all been around long enough for me to notice them, so they're not necessarily the hottest new thing, and you'll probably recognize all of them, including our first defender, the super wide upholstered headboard, also known as Pharrell's big hat for your bed. These things are harmless, obviously that's why they're in the silly category, I just find the proportions visually goofy. I imagine someone walking into a room with one of these, like, oh hey bed, what do you got on there? Like when you discover a little kid that's gotten into some makeup or something. Anyway, there's nothing quite like these headboards in the game, so I have to mash some things together with move objects to replicate this look. I'm using the wall flag from the university expansion pack and layering two of those over the head of a bed, and I recolored them to this tufted texture in dark green with gold rivets. At first I had these overlapping, which looked a little nicer, but then I couldn't get everything centered in the room, so eventually I separate them out and add a matching mirror over the center to attempt to disguise the gap. As you can see, I've gone in an art deco direction, and with this color palette I was specifically inspired by the bedroom in Makara Tours full RV makeover slash tour video, which if you're on YouTube you've probably seen already. I'll be honest, I make no attempt at cohesion across the different rooms in this house, so it would be a very confusing experience to live here. But I think that makes sense for the theme of this video, seeing as in real life, if you go real hard on a trending design aesthetic in one room of your house, it's going to be a little disjointed with the rest of the home. So that's how I'm excusing the chaos, at least. And here's our final look for trend number one, the super wide upholstered headboard. Okay, next up we're moving into the guest bedroom slash office with our second trend in the silly category, dark lime wash walls. This one I kind of think of as the sponge painting of the 2020s. I've mentioned before that the Christopher Lowell show was on often in my household growing up, so I'm familiar with sponge painting. We had a good amount of that going on in my house. Similar to that technique, this lime wash painting is used to create a rustic look, which I think shares some DNA with Shabby Chic, they're both playing pretend at being old. I'm specifically calling out dark lime wash walls here because with these, the color palette is saying serious and somber, but the technique is a little more high school play set design, so I just get a little dissonance from these darker lime wash walls that I don't pick up on so much with the light ones. As such, I've gone with a dark gray in the office here, and to contrast, mostly very light wood furniture. Obviously this room is way more contemporary than the main bedroom, the only area I did try to be consistent throughout the house was the windows. The bedroom had full-length, simple, modern windows, and so does this room. I don't want you to be able to tell from the outside how much of a mixed bag this home is. But anyway, here is our final look for trend number two, dark lime wash walls. We're moving on to the kitchen now, which will contain three different trends, including our final silly trend, painted wood tile floors. 
Honestly, I understand the impulse with this one. I'm a crafty lady myself. I sew, knit, crochet, etc. So I love a useless project. But I'm also familiar with that point in a craft project where you no longer control the craft. The craft is taking the wheel. And I think that's what's going on with these floors. They don't actually look like tile. They look like a lot of sanding and refinishing for the next homeowners. But I don't think that the point is even for them to look like tile. I think it's for someone to get their DIY fix. This is craft junkie behavior. So I can relate but I don't like it. As you can see, I've got the painted wood floors down, so it's time to move on to our next category of trends, impractical. Unlike the silly trends, I would not consider the items in this category to be harmless because they are things that will most likely make your life harder. For our first impractical trend, we have open shelving in the kitchen. Now obviously with this one, I'm not talking about a little floating shelf in the corner of the room. I mean, open shelving is utilized throughout the kitchen in lieu of any traditional overhead cabinetry. So something that serves the purpose of storage has been replaced with something that serves the purpose of display. Not only does this mean you will have to find an alternative place to put anything that isn't perfectly aesthetically pleasing, like Tupperware, kids' dishware, reused jars, or just anything in a color or pattern that doesn't fit with the design of your kitchen, you will also have to ensure that everything on those shelves returns to the proper curated position after use. If you live with a roommate or significant other, as I do, you probably know that two people can have very different ideas of where something goes, even if you've put it there a hundred times. And lastly, what happens on open shelves that does not happen in enclosed cabinets? It gets dusty. You're going to have to dust those things. Or if you're rich and you hire someone else to clean your messes, they're going to have to dust that. Either way, it's unnecessary work. At least when it comes to interior design, I think it's fair to say that aesthetics should improve our lives. We shouldn't be living our lives in service to aesthetics, which is what this shelving would ask of you. And with that, let's move on to our next impractical trend and the final trend for this kitchen, the thick-based round table. So I've seen these tables in various materials, stone, wood, cement, etc., and they all look heavy as f As someone who's moved about seven times in the last decade, I might just be particularly sensitive to this issue, and maybe it doesn't concern you, but... For me, unless that thick base contains magical powers to produce Taco Bell and beer on command, it's not worth the physical effort required to get it into or out of a building. And that's not my only complaint. You cannot be a leg swinger or maybe even a leg jiggler with a table like this because you will kick the base and that won't be nice for anyone. I'm 5'2 and mostly torso, so my legs tend to hover above the ground when I'm sitting in chairs. Sometimes they're swinging a little, sue me, but anyway. This is another one where I had to mash a couple items together with move objects to replicate the look in The Sims. So as you can see, I've placed a round dining table inside of a thick end table to create this shape. It won't actually be usable like that in the game, but I wouldn't use one in real life either. Alright, and that wraps up the kitchen, so let's take a look at the final result. Now we are moving on to the living room with our last trend in the impractical category, the armless statement couch. In addition to their obvious refusal to support your arms, these couches all seem to be super deep and about 10 inches off the ground, so once you sit down, you're not getting up. I thought a mod sort of look for this room would work with this type of couch, so again, it looks nothing like the other rooms in the home. There wasn't a good standalone option in The Sims for this item, so I used one of the sectional pieces to create an L-shaped couch with an attached end table on one side. I will be changing the color of this couch eventually, but before I get to that, I'll be using one more trend in this living room from our final and most offensive category, Hostel. The items in this category create a threatening environment, at least in my opinion, such that if I were to enter a room where one was present, I would likely get the urge to exit. First up, we have chaotic chandeliers. These are typically asymmetrical with multiple long limb-like structures ending in bulbs with a metal or glass shade. They're all kind of giving drone warfare in the living room, so I can only assume that if you were to put one of these in your home, it's with the direct intention of creating an ominous atmosphere to prevent any guests from getting too comfortable. Luckily, The Sims 3 has many offensive lighting options to choose from, so I didn't have to get creative with move objects here. I just went with this five bulb chandelier that looks sort of like a group of jellyfish or a stick figure with really long legs hovering face down. 
I hate it. And that's it for this room, so here's our before and after. Next in the bathroom, it is now time for our last trend in the hostel category and our final trend for this video, the freestanding tub in the middle of the bathroom. Alright, I'm not the biggest fan of freestanding tubs in the first place. I have nothing against a claw foot in a reasonable location, like the corner of a room, but the shape of these more modern tubs does evoke those awful above-counter sinks. However, my issues with these are about function, not aesthetics. First off, the thought of bathing in the center of a room makes me a little uncomfortable. You're naked and wet, unanchored to any walls, no semblance of a curtain or glass around. It's so exposed, you might as well be in a tin bath in the middle of a living room like it's the 1800s. Second, there's the safety issue. What are you holding on to when you step out of a tub like this? Why can't it just be in the corner by the walls? I don't get it. It just seems weird and kinky and it creeps me out. Anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching, and I hope I haven't offended you. I'm sure you have great taste and your house is lovely. And remember, when I look up, I see this, so don't listen to me. Uh, I did remodel the exterior of this home as well, so I'll put a before and after montage of the whole house right after this last reveal. My next video should be up in a week or two. Might be different from this one, but still within the Sims universe. And with that, let's take a look at the full remodel right after our final trend, the freestanding tub in the middle of the bathroom. 